Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is This Week in Sex. So Dua Lipa has clapped back in this last week about all of the backlash that she received after the 2020 Grammys when she was seen in a strip club with Lizzo throwing money at female strippers. Basically, there was this huge uproar of people saying that Dua Lipa is essentially contributing to the exploitation of women and to an industry which is responsible for sex trafficking. After the footage of Dua Lipa throwing money at strippers went viral, the hashtag Dua Lipa is over party started trending on Twitter and she's since come out and said her real thoughts on the issue in a very controversial interview with Rolling Stone where she told the magazine we have to support sex workers we have to believe that the work is their choice and their right it seems hypocritical I think people picking and choosing as to how they want to support women and when it suits them that's another form of misogyny which really derives from the male gaze she also went on to say if you're feminist you have to support women in all fields of work. And I'm gonna have to say, I agree with Dua Lipa here. As someone who runs a sex positive channel and who considers myself a feminist as well, I absolutely believe that we need to support all women, including women who choose to go into the field of sex work because sex work at the end of the day is work. We all have jobs to do and sex work is no different. Sex trafficking definitely is a very big and very concerning issue that needs to be tackled but we need to stop acting like the sex work industry is entirely responsible for sex trafficking and instead demonizing everyone in the sex work industry. A lot of the laws that have been put in place that have supposedly been there to protect people from sex trafficking, all they have done is actually put sex workers in more danger. For example, the Foster SESTA legislation was put in place to curb sex trafficking and what it resulted in was a lot of legitimate sex workers actually not being able to use places like Craigslist, like the websites that they were using to actually advertise their work and actually vet clients and share information with other sex workers about the safety of certain clients and risky clients. All of those sites were removed, which essentially took away sex workers' income and meant a lot of sex workers had to go and do work in way more risky ways going into dodgy brothels or going onto the streets because they weren't able to go online where they were actually able to vet clients properly and where they had protections, where there were forums in place where sex workers could actually share information about clients. And so I just think a lot of the so-called things that we put in place to protect women don't actually do that. All they really do is just to demonize sex. And I think that's just another example of what's happening here with Dua Lipa is just this idea that if women are sexual, if women choose a job that involves sex, it is somehow inherently bad or that it is exploitative because women supposedly would never want to get into sex work. And I find it super interesting considering the fact that women are constantly sexualized against our will. We're sexualized every day by men when we don't want to be sexualized. And then when we actually try to cash in on it, and make some money out of it, and make a living out of it, we are told that we are partaking in an exploitative and evil industry. And it's just this huge double standard that I personally would like to see end. So I have to say, Dua Lipa, I'm standing with you, babe. In other news, ex-porn star Mia Khalifa has just donated over $160,000 to various charities and she came out basically on her social media thanking her supporters on OnlyFans for helping raise that money so that she could support 
all of these charities. She said on Instagram, you guys helped me donate over $160,000 to charities and organizations that mean the most to me. I'm so grateful for the platform and all the incredible, strong, determined women I've met through the internet because of it. You guys have taught me so much and helped me grow as a person in more ways than I can ever begin to thank you for. What's also really crazy about this is she has only been on OnlyFans since September and she's already been able to make this incredible amount of money. Mia Khalifa was originally best known for a very extremely controversial porn scene that she filmed wearing a hijab. She has come out and basically spoken against the porn industry and people like Pornhub talking about the fact that she was exploited a lot while she was in that industry, that she was severely underpaid. Apparently she only made something like $12,000 in earnings in the three months that she was making porn and she doesn't make any more royalties despite the fact that her videos and her images are still to this day being run on other porn companies' websites that other porn companies are cashing in on and that there was really a lack of duty of care for her when she was filming scenes and a lack of education around how filming scenes like the hijab scene were really going to impact her life and really put her in danger because she actually received a lot of death threats and really had her life, you know, put at risk after she filmed that scene. I'm just trying to get my head around how stressful this must have been and whether even now, because you sit here so poised and obviously a lot of time has passed and you've moved on, but do you think there is some sort of post-traumatic stress that is in you from this experience? Yes, and uh, I think it kicks in mostly when I go out in public because the stares I get, I feel like people can see through my clothes and it brings me deep shame. And so what I love about this story is that she has actually gone independent and she has essentially taken her financial earning capability into her own hands. She can film the kind of content she wants to film. She is known now for not actually doing anything highly sexual. It's more just kind of sexy images and videos that she makes most of her money out of. And she's in control of the content and she is in control of the earnings because because unlike porn companies, OnlyFans only takes around 20% of what creators make. So there is potential to earn a lot more money there. And I think this is why we are seeing a trend now, a real spike of just everyday women turning to OnlyFans as a very legitimate second income stream. Again, this is an area where I see a lot of people demonizing this space and saying that it's wrong and it's exploitative. But in actual fact, spaces like OnlyFans give women so much more agency in terms of their earning capability and what sorts of content they're actually putting out and control over that content than places necessarily like Pornhub do. So I think the issue is not with porn itself, it's with some of the people that are running these companies and that the way that they are actually treating performers. That's what we really need to be examining here rather than simply demonizing porn altogether because we know that porn has done some good things besides Mia Khalifa donating all this money to charities. There was also a case last year of a very famous OnlyFans star in Australia where I live. A lot of you guys think I'm from England, by the way. I don't know why you think that. I've actually never been to England. I am an Aussie through and through. I live in Sydney, Australia. G'day, mate. And there was um, actually, not laughably, there was some really bad bushfires here earlier last year and a very prominent OnlyFans star actually raised hundreds of thousands of dollars through selling her nudes to go towards bushfire relief. And so porn absolutely can do good things. I think we just need to look around giving people more opportunities to have more autonomy and more agency when they are entering into the sex work industry. And I think this story is just a great example of that. And then last but certainly not least, the show Bridgerton has been renewed for another season. And a lot of people are attributing it to the fact that it has some extremely saucy, extremely hot sex scenes and spoon licking as well, which is surprisingly sensual. And so the series, because of this, has surpassed over 63 million views around the world. And it is now one of the most popular shows 
on Netflix. If you guys haven't watched it, make sure you do. And if you have watched it, I would love you to let me know in your comments section what you think of the new season being renewed, what you're looking forward most to, and what you think of those saucy sex scenes. And that's it for another week in sex. I'll see you guys next Monday for more sexy news content. In the meantime, stay safe, stay sexy, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.